For the record, I should add this too. I don't know anyone in Portsmouth. I know a few people by first name, such as Jane at Cash Converters. I know a few people by their first name and last name, such as... Um, Lynn Stagg, because we were on an environmental forum together. And that's it! Hi, time for an update on my stalking hacking situation. I don't know where to start, so I'll start with the thing that comes to mind first. I have a friend in Amsterdam who is slightly autistic. She's also a lawyer. She has two grown children who are well into their careers and into their families. Really wonderful people. I've worked with one of them. This woman was on Skype. All of a sudden she disappeared off Skype, but somebody else popped up as a suggestion sort of in Skype and showing one mutual contact. My friend's two children also show up as having a mutual contact, but my friend has disappeared. I was getting really strange messages from her, emails, really crazy emails that made me feel angry and that tend to make you want to lash out, say something like, you're crazy. But I didn't think that these messages were actually coming from my friend because it didn't add up. I had Skype with her a few times and she seemed just her normal self. I didn't think there was anything really crazy going on there. Then one day, actually last, I think Sunday it was, I received a message from her that revealed without any doubt that these messages were not coming from her because somebody was poking fun, playing a word game with something that was quintessentially Dutch and that person had not gotten what this was about. This told me that whoever sent me this message was not Dutch. This has happened many times before in the past 13 years. I am afraid I also believe that my friend's equipment has gotten hacked into because what also happened at some point in Skype or at least that somebody accessed her Skype account because what also happened at some point was that I was invited into a conversation on Skype with my friend and two other people. One person was in Leiden, a Dutch city, a university city in which I've lived for a short while too, and a German woman. Probably just to ridicule my friend. That's what I think, because she has some interesting interests. She is into some slightly esoteric topics, that's certainly true. She is far from a traditional person. She is a liberated, emancipated woman and her interests sometimes take her to the edge of certain topics. That's certainly true, but she tends to veer back from that and she tends to listen to people. She knows what she's talking about, but her opinions are very fixed as tends to be common, I think, with autism. This does not make her stupid at all. She started a law degree when she was still fairly young and finished it some 20 years later or so when her children were older. I was at her graduation. I'm not making that up and she's not making that up. She's had a top position for the Dutch government for a while, except her own opinions and regular opinions clashed at some point. That is something that autistic people don't seem to get. They don't see that some things aren't reconcilable within etiquette or whatever you want to call it within society. And these things vary by culture. So there is no actual logic to it. And autistic people tend to think rather logically, devoid of all sorts of weird attachments. That's the impression I have. And I'm furious that whoever is messing with me is now also messing with my friend. She had gained some kind of big grant and some strange things started happening with that. And at some point I thought, I'm not so sure whether she's not making it all up, the whole thing. Then this weekend it hit me that this is what I've been sounding like too. Like I've been making it all up. Like, for example, the work that I was getting for this Chinese-American technology company that suddenly disappeared. 
that's what my friend started sounding like too. So I'm afraid that she's now getting messed with as well, just to hurt me. Just like animals have gotten killed and hurt around me here, just to spite me. I know this sounds far-fetched, except it's happened to me too. I remember that one of my clients was emailing me all the time he needed an order number for the work I was supposed to do for him. And he'd been trying to get that order number, at least that's what he said in his emails, um, that he couldn't get the order number, that they were going to call him back, blah, 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 blah. Then I, which is strange because I've worked with this client, had worked with this client for uh, over 20 years. And then I got a call from the bookkeeping department, apparently, from a woman who sounded exactly like a friend of mine who had just passed away. And I don't know why she called. She was going on about my business name. I don't know what. I, I tried to call her back because I was very busy at the time. I have no idea. I still don't know why she called me. I tried to call her back and when the other side picked up, we lost the connection. I would ask, can I speak to so-and-so? And then in the, me in the middle of that, the connection would be cut. And I called the second time and the same thing happened. So I suspect that that call that I got was fake. This was the start of approximately six months of payments from my oldest and most loyal client in the Netherlands going astray all the time. At the end of that six month period, I received this message. This was March 2020. So what I just talked about this phone conversation is was September, October 2019. At the end of 2019, I also got a assignment. Let's call it an assignment for a Chinese American technology company. It wasn't uh, very, um, how shall I put it, special. But it seemed to pay well, and I expected to receive approximately 3,000 bucks for that job. Of course, it all disappeared from my computer, all the work that I did, which has happened before. That was the end of 2019. On my 60th birthday in September 2020, a research grant proposal I had been working on suddenly disappeared from my hard disk and from my USB stick, I had checked the evening before that it was on my USB stick before I shut down my computer. I then told the client I could no longer work for them because research grants are the lifeblood of any decent scientist. They pay for salaries, they pay for equipment, so without this, their careers are gone. I could not risk that a hacker was going to mess up these grant proposals for one of my clients just to spite me, just like animals have gotten hurt and killed just to spite me. I've also gotten two calls with the voices of two people I know. <sighs> what can I say? I've also gotten really strange messages from a guy in America. I didn't think they, those messages were coming from him either. And he started going on about a woodwind guy, which made absolutely no sense. He was going on about something that happened over 13 years ago without any cause or reason. I hadn't mentioned woodwinds. I hadn't even mentioned a violin or music. I haven't had a violin for a long time and I haven't had any woodwinds. Well, actually, I do have a few penny whistles, but um, no saxophones left. Yes, I had a saxophone for a while. I've had a few of them. I was taught to play the violin when I was a toddler and then something really strange happened that sort of severed my connection to music. I'm not sure what happened. Everybody who was alive in those days has either died or was younger than I was back then. So I don't know what exactly happened. It doesn't really matter anymore. I reconnected to music um, a while ago and I've always been into music anyway. I was in all sorts of choirs and I've always, throughout my life, there's always been an instrument in my life. 
whether it was a keyboard, whether it was a uh, the recorder, there's always been something uh, like that in my life. Always. And I know that Brits have a really strange opinion about women and music. Apparently women are not supposed to be in music. Whatever. That's your problem, Britain. That's not my problem. Now to come back to my stalking and hacking. This began, indeed, within 24 hours after having met with a woodwind guy for uh, the repair of an alto that I had purchased on eBay, stupidly not knowing what I was doing. This thing didn't play because, never mind. Um, I did get some sound out of it, but there was a problem with it. Let's not get into that. Anyway, I became targeted within 24 hours after that. And as I didn't know anyone in Britain, it was logical for me to assume that this guy was behind it. I had met, dealt with a Navy vet and his wife and his staff several times, but there was no way in hell I could imagine that he was targeting me without reason all of a sudden. And I had become targeted within 24 hours after having met with this particular woodwind guy. And there was something really strange going on there. It was as if this guy expected me to jump him any second. There was something really weird going on there. I don't know what that was about. Probably also some unfathomable British thing that I just don't get. What I didn't know, however, is that this guy has a brother. And what I didn't know is that Portsmouth is just downright crazy. Portsmouth is crazy. Batshit crazy. And you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to explain this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're totally out of the loop. I think that there, I know that there is some neurodiversity involved in this. I was initially convinced that this woodwind guy had DID, what's known, what used to be known as a multiple personality disorder, what's now called dissociative identity disorder. Why do I think that? Well, I remember the, oh, by the way, I should say this. The last time I spoke with this guy was on 20 September 2008. That's the last time I interacted with this person in real life. I've interacted with this person three times in 2008. So anyone who's saying anything else, get a life. This was because my saxophone had fallen off my desk chair. It was sitting behind me, you know, a swivel chair. I had forgotten for a second that it was behind me and I turned around and the thing fell off the chair. I will never do that again. And one of the keys had gotten bent a little bit. So I could traipse, traipse up to wherever this guy is based, which was a rather long trip, but I was going to go to a certain pub gig, which I used to do. And he was going to be there, so it was much easier to just take the saxophone along to that gig. And I said something like, where do you want me to put this? The saxophone down on the floor or whatever. And later something like, thank you, oh, that's wonderful. And that's it. That's the last thing, the last time I've spoken with this guy. But during that gig, I was sitting there and all of a sudden find myself thinking, very strangely, now, don't go pretending you're somebody else. I felt angry and I was looking at him and it's, he seemed to be a totally, completely different guy. That's weird, isn't it? I've also seen a video at around the same time of a studio recording performance, something like that, in which I also automatically, out of my deep subconscious, whatever, said, who are you? Stuff just didn't make sense. But that's all I know. I know a woman with DID in the Netherlands who's always been very open about having DID. I've been to her house and she's shown me the corner for her little ones where all the fluffed animals and stuff are sitting. She has no problem with talking about it. 
when she discovered what was going on, it took her a long time to get diagnosed properly. Of course, everything was said that wasn't actually the case at first. And she got a good job, she got herself a master's, and she's been doing fine ever since. She's a very intelligent woman, woman who incidentally grew up just a few miles down the road from me. I may have, I've likely passed her a few times when I was a teenager, because she was living on my way to my high school. Yeah, it's a small world. I met her in Amsterdam, by the way. Then I was told that this guy had NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, with psychopathy, so that he was a malignant narcissist. Is he? I don't know. How the hell am I supposed to know? Most recently, I've gotten hints that he has Asperger's. Does he have Asperger's? Yeah, it's quite possible. He said some things back then that I can now put within that sort of context. But it might still also fit within a DID context. I don't know. I really genuinely don't know. I didn't know about this brother's existence, but it dawned on me at some point that something was off. Somebody was messing with me approximately 24-7. And this guy, who is known as a top professional throughout the UK, who nobody in Portsmouth has ever heard of, not even the guy whose pub he used to frequent, Nobody at Portsmouth had ever heard of this guy, even though he's known throughout the UK and even beyond the UK for his professional role. So yeah, Portsmouth, you suck. You suck. I realized that it wasn't logistically possible for him to be targeting me 24-7, so something was off here. And there was this guy that had been following me around. Now I'm going to jump back to 2008 again. Some really weird shit was happening back then. For example, I walked up to my building once and I thought I saw this woodwind guy in the flat under mine. That wasn't possible, right? That couldn't possibly be true. I saw somebody walk up to the window just as I walked up and then quickly step back. There was also somebody, and that day there was a big taxi, a typically British taxi, standing outside all day long. There was also a guy who drove up for approximately a month in a little red car. I was living in an old Victorian building at the time, and I could hear somebody trying to be very quiet in the flat under mine. These floors were so thin that you could hear everything, and you could hear when it's somebody is trying to be quiet, because it sounds like somebody is trying to be quiet. This guy would show up at 10 or so in the morning and he would leave again at approximately four o'clock. Anyway, really strange stuff started happening back then, including me seeing people taking photographs of me. I figured that couldn't possibly be true either. But I did start wondering, hey, wait a minute, is this Woodwin guy somebody famous? Somebody I just have never heard of? Because I'm not that into famous people and so on. So I looked into that, but I couldn't find anything. Um, I assumed, this continued when I moved to Portsmouth, by the way, I assumed still that I was just imagining it. Then one evening when I had told somebody on Twitter in a DM, somebody in Chester, that I was going outside, where I was going and what I was going to do. It was a stormy night, the boulevards, the parades had been closed, nobody was out, I was there. And all of a sudden, standing in the monument, and all of a sudden I saw a flash of somebody taking a photograph. And that's when I realized that I had not been imagining this. Somebody had been taking photographs of me and somebody had asked other people to take photographs of me. Crazy, right? Totally crazy. But back then, right that moment, I knew that I had not been imagining this. A little while later, or approximately, I don't know exactly when this was, when this monument thing, by the end of 2010, when my life had completely collapsed, because my life completely collapsed after I moved to Portsmouth. I didn't know about this person's existence. I didn't know that he was living in Portsmouth. He currently appears to be living just a few streets away from me. That person then made contact with me. 
in real life and he introduced himself to me as a student of photography. He said he was a photography student. I share my own personal experiences and insights. That's all. If you can benefit from them, fine. But I am not a shrink. I am not a psychologist, psychotherapist, psychiatrist. None of that. I'm just a regular human being. Okay, I'm a regular human being with an earth and life science background. Okay, that's true.